Hey what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be going at everything over lenses, all about focal lengths, why some lenses are more expensive than others, what everything means on the lens like every single little number on the lens, what's the difference between prime and zoom lenses. So hopefully by the end of the video if you know exactly what you want to shoot and how you want to shoot it you should exactly know which type of lens you should buy and what focal length you want. So basically the focal length of a lens is basically how the image is actually framed. So the wider the focal length you go, such as 16 millimeters, the frame is actually gonna be super wide. So you're gonna actually take in so much of the scene. However, if you use more of a telephoto lens, such as a 70 millimeter, then it's gonna be way more compressed. So this is where you're really gonna be subject isolating. You get lenses that actually have a zoom feature. So the focal length on this lens goes from 16 millimeters all the way up to 35 millimeters. But then I also have a lens here that is a 35 millimeter. So you might think, why have I got a 35 millimeter? and then also a lens that goes up to a 35 millimeter surely buying the 35 millimeter focal length is going to be a waste of money however this is where the aperture comes into play with lenses every single lens has an aperture and the aperture basically is how much light gets let into your lens with lenses with a zoom feature like the 16 to 35 but the widest aperture you can go on this lens is f4 now there is a 16 to 35 f 2.8 lens as well of this version which opens up wider which means it can let more light in and with a lower aperture it means the background will be more blurrier which is good for subject isolation such as portrait but basically the difference between that lens and this lens was this one had image stabilization but the other one didn't now getting back to why do i have a 35 millimeter when i already have a 35 millimeter in this one well like i said this lens is it opens up to f4 throughout the zoom range However, this lens here opens up to f1.8. Now that is a huge difference in letting in light and also background blur. Now you can't really get zoom lenses with an aperture of f1.8. However, with this one exception that Canon actually released a 28 to 70 f2. And f2 and f1.8 is basically the same, it's so similar. And that lens is like three, four grand. Now you can really see why that lens is so much money because it's basically got four prime lenses in one. Now that's why typically the way to get really wide open apertures to get that real nice shallow depth of field is when you gotta go for prime lenses because it's only one focal length. But if you go for this one, yes, you've got the option to go to 16 millimeter, 24 and 35 millimeters, but you can't open that aperture to f1.8. You can only go down to f4 or if you've got the other lens, f2.8, which is still a big difference. So basically that's the differences between why I have a 35 millimeter in this lens and that lens. If you actually see a difference between 35 millimeter f4, like I'm showing you now, and f1.8, you can really, really kill off that background and really get that nice bokeh. So you can really separate your subject from that background. While we're still sticking on the 16 to 35, let's actually talk about what this lens is actually really good for. Now a 16 to 35 millimeter, so an ultra wide lens, just any wide angle lens like a 16 millimeter, you can go lower to like 12 and then you can actually go lower than that to actually 10, which is basically called a fisheye lens. This lens is really, really good for landscape photography because obviously you want to show the whole scene of where you're at. So if you want to get a big mountain there and like a little river down here with a little house over here, you'll use a wide angle lens so you can capture the whole scene. It's also really good for real estate shoots just think about it, if you're doing a real estate photography shoot and you're indoors and you're in a really small little bathroom or a small bedroom, if you're gonna be using a 35 millimeter to capture that, it's a more compressed than obviously the 16 millimeter wide angle. So with it being 16 millimeters, you can really capture the whole room and it also shows how big the room is so that it actually makes the room look bigger than normal than if you're using a 24 or 35 millimeter. Now this is actually the, probably the biggest reason why I invested my money into buying the 16 to 35 because I want to do it for real estate photography. Now I have a 24 millimeters, but as you can see here, the difference between 16 millimeters and 24 millimeters is actually really big. You wouldn't think it would be that big but honestly it is a big difference so as you can see if you're actually in a room and you want to be taking some photos of the whole room like a living room then the wider angle you can get the better because it really shows how big that room is and you can really capture everything in that room and then these lenses are also great for like vlogging because if you don't want to constantly hold your arm really stretch out and obviously with it being 16 millimeters it can capture your whole face and it can also capture the environment around you so if you want to show off where you are it's really easy by using a really wide angle lens now the thing is if you go to buy a lens in a shop it doesn't really say 
what this lens is used for. So if you're gonna go buy 16 to 35, it doesn't say perfect for this type of photography and that type of photography. Because at the end of the day, you can use any lens for anything really. Now obviously, you're not gonna be shooting a real estate shoot with a 70 to 200 lens. I know there are obviously some lenses are better than others, like this is better for real estate photography than this one. But then like I said, you can get some really nice portraits with this lens as well. So if you wanna do some portraits and actually isolate the subject that you're shooting from the background, then yes, use like a prime lens, like a 50mm or 35mm or 70 to 200 to completely kill off that background. However, you can also mix things up and you might want to get some of the environment in. Like if you're on holiday and you want to take some portrait shoots and you have this really nice waterfall, then shooting on a 70 to 200 millimeters, yes, it's going to be really nice for the face, but you're on holiday and if you want to show off the scene where you are for some memories, then you might want to use a 16 to 35 to capture the portrait of the person, but also get that massive landscape as well in the background so you actually know where you are and you want to show off where you are so you can get some real nice unique perspectives with this lens for portrait photography as well so now moving up to the 35 millimeter lens so this is basically good for all types of photography i'd say it's not perfect at everything and it's also not the worst at everything because it opens up to f1.8 it's really good at subject isolation obviously because it's really really light as well you can actually go around and shoot so many different things with this lens such as portraits landscapes car photography street photography people do say it's the perfect street photography lens but obviously like i said you can get creative with a 7200 or maybe a 16 millimeter but this prime lens is obviously really great because it can open up to f1.8 but this lens is really good so if you're in low light situations then this light is going to be really good if you want to get some portrait shoots at night if you're actually inside a building and you want to get some nice shots and you don't have a flash this is where this lens will come in handy because you don't have to up your iso too much because it can open up to f1.8 which lets tons and tons of light in now moving over to the 50 millimeter i'll basically talk about these two the same because they're really really similar even though 50 50 millimeters and 35 millimeters is actually a big difference in actually lens compression as you can see here some of the photos I took on the beach and look how different the 35 millimeter is to the 50 millimeter you can really see where you are with the 35 millimeter but not so much on the 50 millimeter so this is why this lens is really good for portraits as well because it really does compress that background it really does separate the subject from the background I do have a video comparing these two lenses so I won't go into it too much detail in here and I will link it right here if you do want to go check that video out because it really does do an ultimate comparison between these two lenses now when we're actually moving on to a 70 to 200 lens this is when it gets really really different compared to all the other lenses because obviously the compression it gives from 70 millimeters is a really good telephoto lens anyway and then when you zoom into 200 millimeters this is getting to a really good telephoto lens now this is also such a versatile lens because it's great for wildlife photography it's great for portrait photography it's great for sports photography and you can also get some really unique landscapes with it as well and then you also got super telephoto lenses that can go up to like 600 and 800 now these lenses are basically only going to be used for wildlife photography because of how far away like birds are if they're in a lake for example. So now you know what all these focal lengths actually are probably used for and best at. So next time don't rush out and buy a lens. If you think this lens is really good and everyone's talking about it, it might not be for what you need. So if you exactly know what you want for photography or video, hopefully this video has helped you pick which lens is right for you. Now we've talked about the actual focal length, let's actually talk about what the actual numbers and everything means on a lens. This number here means means it's going from 16 millimeters to 35 millimeters. So that's the focal length. Below that, it says image stabilization and ultrasonic. That sure basically shows that it's got image stabilization and ultrasonic to the actual focus motor being used. Moving over to the left of this, it's basically the focus reader. So it actually determines how close and how far you can actually go. So on this one, it says 0.28 feet is the minimum focus distance. And then it goes to infinity. So you can focus from as far away as you possibly can. On this 35 millimeter prime lens, it actually says it more in depth so it says the minimum focal distance is either 0.17 meters or 0.56 feet to infinity and then if you actually move on to the side this is where the switches are so af means autofocus and mf means manual focus so that's where you can actually change from different autofocus to manual focus and then below that it's got stabilizer this is where you actually want to turn on your image stabilization or if you actually want to turn off the image stabilization and then below that you've actually got the zoom ring so as you can see it's got different numbers so it's it's got 16, 20, 24, 28, and 35. This is basically the focal length that you're actually at. And that little dot below that determines what focal length you're at. So at the minute, this says 16 millimeters. And if I want to go to 28 millimeters, I just line up the 28 and that line. And now the lens is at 28 millimeters. If you actually come to the top of the lens and actually open up the lens cap, it says Canon Zoom Lens EF 
and EF means the mount of the actual lens. So this was designed for the EF mount, which is DSLRs. And then you've got 16 to 35, like the front, and then it says one to four, which means F4. L means Canon L series, which means it's premium. IS, image stabilization, and USM is the ultrasonic motor, which is the focus motor. And then if you actually turn that around here, it says a little circle with a dash in and 77 millimeters. This is actually the filter thread. So if you want to buy a filter, such as an ND filter for this lens, you're going to want to buy a 77 millimeter filter so you can actually fit it on this lens. If you've got buy a 77 millimeter filter and you want to put it on this lens, that doesn't mean you have to buy a 52 millimeter filter because the filter thread of this lens is 52 millimeters. You can just buy step up and step down rings and then put the filters on them and then you can use bigger filters on lower filter thread lenses. So that's everything, what actually all of it means on a lens so you know exactly how to read a lens name and what actually comes on it. So if you see a lens saying F1.8 and then another lens saying F1.2, but the millimeter is the exact same. So for example, Canon do an RF 50 millimeter F1.8 and I also do a 50 millimeter F1.2. One is like 200 pounds, the other one's 2000 pounds. And basically the only difference, if unless you count weather sealing, that's another difference as well. But the only difference really is the F1.2, which means it lets in more light and the background can get even more crushed and you can get even more shallow depth of field. That's how much f-stop matters really to photographers because people really do buy lenses at f1.2 or f1.4 over an f1.8 just to get that extra light or that shallow depth of field and they really do pay that extra money for it. We've talked about primes and zoom lenses and what the differences are and why one's more expensive than the other mainly because of the f-stop as well like I mentioned. However you can also get zoom lenses which are probably normally named kit lenses that are two completely different lenses however they look the exact same so don't get fooled. So Canon RF 24 to 105 which I have here kit lens and then there's also another kit lens a Canon RF 24 to 105. So you might say what's the difference apart from the red ring? Well the f-stop on it is basically the one I have is a Canon 24 to 105 f4 to f7.1 whereas the other one is just an f4 which means when you zoom in from 24 to 105 the one on I have the f-stop goes from f4 at 24 millimeters and then when you zoom in the f-stop changes and keeps going higher and higher until you reach 105 millimeters and then when you're at 105 millimeters the f-stop is at 7.1 which obviously darkens the image so much compared to f4 and you don't get that shallow depth of field as much as if you was at f4 whereas the other lens which is only f4 when you zoom in the picture does not change at all the exposure don't change because you're still at f4 and the background subject isolation doesn't change because you're still at f4 this is why one is basically double in price than this lens because it also has a weather sealing yes but the main difference is it's because of the variable aperture but if you did find this video helpful why not hit that like button because it really does help me out and subscribe to see more tutorials like this in the future as well as gear reviews and gear news thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy this video you might like these four other videos that i have done on this channel so why not give that a watch if you like enjoyed this one thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video see you later